Good afternoon. Um, welcome to Community CPA's uh, three o'clock afternoon webinar. Um, my name is Brent Myron, and um, I work in the IT department here at Community CPA doing uh, some different things. And um, today we'll be talking about um, data in your business and different ways you can use it. Uh, so give me one second. Um, so this is the topic of our webinar today. Uh, just a little bit of background about um, us as an organization. Um, we're based uh, here in Iowa and in Minnesota. Uh, we have an office in Minnesota. Um, we recently uh, were awarded a uh, Better Business Bureau Torch Award for Ethics, um, which was exciting. Um, Ying Sa is our um, CEO and one of our partners, and uh, she serves on the National Taxpayer advocacy panel um, and is a, uh, a source of input um, to the IRS. Um, so if you have um, any suggestions or uh, input or feedback, you know, we're, we're a voice that can speak for the community and she, uh, she participates in doing that. Um, just before we get started, um, we have a responsibility disclaimer here just to say that, you know, take everything uh, we say here with the uh, grain of salt, uh, do your own research. Um, we're offering this as part of our services and to try, try to inform you, but we're not responsible for um, any damages or misuse of this information um, and whatnot. So um, if you uh, are interested in um, pursuing some, some of what we talked about here today, um, just you know, do your research uh, and, uh, and proceed responsibly. <laughs> um, so, uh, the goal today is just to, to talk a little bit about data um, and, and how it can be useful for your business. Um, kind of give a survey of what's out there in terms of where you can get data, how you could use it, different sort of tools um, uh, and ways that people use data for some interesting things. Um, and give you some just some simple tips and tricks, some um, heuristics to get you started looking for your data that you can use um, in your business and uh, working with it, exploring with it, um, playing with it. And really, we just want to encourage you to, um, you know, practice data literacy and uh, try to try to use it for your operations and uh, for your uh, analytics and, you know, maybe go from there. Um, so first of all, I guess, what is data? Um, it's, very, it's a very general term and it can really encompass basically anything in terms of information. Um, often we think about it in terms of facts or statistics like numbers. Uh, but it can be um, also something that's, you know, very different. So um, it can be your data can include dates, can do categories, it can include um, things that are, you know, true or false about whatever you're collecting data about. Um, it can be sort of uh, unstructured in various ways. I mean, you think about um, data on uh, maybe like your customers uh, might it will include information like their names, obviously, which is just text data. Um, and uh, data can also also um, obviously be stored in um, various certain ways. We we have a lot of unstructured data. There's more and more data um, as time goes on, and it's growing. The amount of data that exists, just collected through the web and whatnot, um, is is growing exponentially. Um, but the challenge is, you know, how do you get access to it? How do you use it? How do you structure it? How do you understand it? Um, and you know, you can look at something like like the different documents your company has in terms of PDFs as types of data that is has some structure or is, or is uh, you know semi unstructured um, you can have uh, you can look at like pictures um, there's a lot of uh, work these days with um, methods that are trying to classify images and detect things so I mean you go to a website and you do one of those captures sometimes it'll ask you to um, identify, you know, the stoplight in the picture. And, and what, what you're kind of doing is actually just providing some training data um, that can help someone eventually, you know, get a computer trained to detect stop, stoplight or, or other things like that. Um, so it can be basically in any form, but it just, you know, it's, it's information codified in, in some way, often on a computer, but, you know, really we can think about data more generally as just, you know, the information that we we live our life with and we act and we, we operate under um, certain assumptions about certain things. That's, that's the type of data that you know, exists in our brains. 
Um, but here we're, we're talking more basically about um, your tr traditional data in a spreadsheet, tabular, something like that. Um, but obviously, um, let, let's talk about what, why data is important. Um, it, data is a tool that can kind of help you, in my opinion, see things that aren't obvious. It enhances your perception. Um, it's like a window into a, a world that you might not be able to see, or it's a microscope that lets you uh, uh, zoom in on something, drill down into something, um, and and work in, in some area that um, that may not be as intuitively obvious to you. Um, you know, we're only human, and we have our our, our biases, um, and and um, just having things in uh, the form of data that you're, you're working with um, can help you see different things and, and challenge um, some of those biases that you have. Um, obviously, when you begin looking at data, you, you, you're doing so with a purpose. You have maybe a question about how you can make your business run better or how something works. And um, by looking at data, um, you, you, you can probe um, those questions, you can you can you can refine them. You can develop theories. You can get a you know yeah, uh, a, a better window into things. Um, and ultimately, you want you you want to use that to to guide your decision making in certain instances where you you are using data to inform a choice about um, what is the most successful product to to market or what's what's the best dish <laughs> at our restaurant. You know. Um, it, it could help you answer questions about any of those kind of things that you, you've captured information on or you're, you, you have data for. Um, and what I mean, one of the big things is it helps you understand uh, your customers, your business, and it can help you make predictions about um, the future and uh, your operations. Um, one of the common things these days, I mean, you know, you think of, think of Amazon, but they're trying to collect uh, data constantly about, you know, what are your product preferences so that they can recommend certain things to you. And they're grouping us as customers and doing all sorts of things like that. And, you know, you can do that as a business, uh, even if it's at a smaller scale, but it's just, it's just a step of kind of, uh, of, of digging in and, and building some of the, the, the skills and the tools and, and, and starting to look at things. Um, so let's talk about, uh, you know, where uh, you have data. So you already are using data, right? You have you have knowledge about your business and what you're doing and uh, you're, you're monitoring things. And um, from the day-to-day, -day, uh, you're doing a lot with, with data, but you also have probably access to more data through just different things that you use um, that if you are deliberate about it, you can explore and use and try to inform your understandings. Um, so just common examples, right? We talk about finances or your, your, your books, uh, that's a source of data that you could use. Um, we, we often have sales data, we're tracking employee time for payroll. You might have a website that we have some ability to look at um, traffic and page views and things like that. Um, and we also maybe have information about our customers, you know, who they are, what they're kind of purchasing um, that we can use to try to um, provide a better value for them by, you know, basically matching them with things that, that we're trying to try to uh, sell. Um, so my question is, I guess, you know, what app, think about what applications your business is using and um, kind of explore those things a little bit. And often you'll find you can export some data from them often in Excel or uh, CSV format, which is stands for comma, comma separated value format, which is just a, a simple way of having a table. Um, but, you know, dig around into some of these things, right? You have, um, banking, so your, you know, your bank account, or you might have some exports, you have your uh, point of sale system, you might be doing things with your inventory, uh, different marketing or advertising channels. Um, you might have a, a piece of software that helps you manage your workload. So you're maybe scheduling client things, putting in work orders, creating projects. Um, you probably have some employees, they have some time records um, that you can use and look at patterns or um, manipulate in a certain way to help you, you know, to even just, just monitor um, time you have maybe a website if you have an email or a phone system often those providers will have some sorts of reports about you know call volumes or email volumes or storage used and things like that that you can look into um, and then you know uh, some 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 of you have you know customer surveys that are, that are set up I mean the, the the possibilities are sort of endless and um, there's I have listed here public data where you have you can find data this may be related to your line of business, uh, 
that could also help you uh, make some decisions. And, um, you know, if you get really, really complicated, you can even do something like, um, you know, if people, people go and, and look at like Twitter, right? You, people have collected a bunch of data about tweets and you can analyze the sentiment of those kind of things. And maybe that gives you an idea of whether or not um, certain things you're doing are going in the right direction or not. You know, um, the, 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 the internet is out there and there's a lot of data, even that's related to your firm or can help you um, make decisions. Uh, so don't discount that too, but definitely look close to home. You'll find maybe more. Um, and even if you don't have something on hand, it, it, you know, I hope to, um, give you some principles about how you might track certain things and you might organize certain things so that you can do some, something, um, with, with just data that you yourself want to collect. Um, so, uh, let's just talk about some of the like really fancy things you could do with your data. Um, if, if you sort of get to that certain level, um, and, uh, each for each one of these things too, I mean, just by, but just by looking at what you have, um, you can, um, approximate the same kind of thing that these methods are trying to do. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, AB testing. So this is a method where it's used a lot in, in, in terms of, um, uh, websites, website design, uh, where you are going to um, collect data on your website usage or sales or whatnot. And uh, you actually implement a, a testing methodology where you will randomly assign um, your customers to different groups. So you might have a control group, which is where your existing website layout looks like. And maybe you're trying to test drive um, a new website layout. And uh, so you, you just, um, randomly assign visitors to of your website to those two different um, groups and you look at different metrics and um, maybe you use that to inform how you might update your website or if a design isn't going to work. Um, you do similar things with with like, you know, uh, product rollouts. You might have a certain type of product that you want to um, try to um, test in certain, certain, certain stores or certain, um, certain areas. And um, you can try to you know, randomly assign them to where you're going to, where you're going to, um, uh, test them out. And, and then after a little while, um, you can use, uh, some, some fancy statistics to kind of get an idea of, uh, whether or not the difference you saw in performance is, is, um, either due to chance or is, uh, uh, is a large effect. Um, yeah. Um, another thing is uh, classification. So this is a kind of a, a, fa a fancy uh, uh, illustration where essentially, um, if you think about it, you have customers and your customers might fall into um, different types of categories. And if you collect data on your customers, you might be able to um, uh, classify them in certain contexts and deliver to them, you know, um, certain types of advertising that may fit their, 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 their classification type, um, whether or not it's, you know, a collection of interests, um, or maybe even, you know, just knowing to, uh, you know, serve them an advertisement for, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 some local offering or whatnot. Um, there's also um, methods where you're just kind of just trying to categorize your customers by groups of um, their features. Um, and and that, that falls in this category of unsupervised learning. So here you see this, this plot and you can think about like, you know, um, you know, how, how can you group people to, to, into to relevant categories that can help you um, approach problems um, or uh, deliver services to, to, to different different groups of them? And then obviously there's, there's some, you know, like forecasting methods you might have, um, certain things that you care about that you uh, uh, want to uh, come up with a forecast for, and there are different, you know, fancy methods for doing that sort of thing. Um, but um, obviously the question is like, where do you start with your business? I mean, we serve a lot of small and medium sized businesses. And so um, there's kind of a, a, a different um, starting point where um, the, the first goal is just to kind of go look for your data, try things out, um, get comfortable with um, what you can do and how you should uh, uh, kind of interact and, and, and organize those things. Um, so, you know, um, once you have an idea of what data you have, um, 
you you want to develop questions of you know what, what do you want to know um how do you how how's how do you want to maybe break it down or drill into it how do you want to summarize it and then um it's just a uh repetitive process where you're, you're kind of building on that understanding um you're building new tool new, new reports um things things like that until eventually you know you get to this point where you're maybe doing something uh, pretty sophisticated um yeah so one of the first uh tips though that i want to talk about when it comes to thinking about data is uh you, you imagine like a spreadsheet right <laughs> an excel spreadsheet um, where Excel is this tool where you, you use it for a bunch of different purposes. And the key with working with data is having a certain type of organization. And the simplest uh, way to understand how to organize a spreadsheet is, is like this. It follows this rules called the tidy data, tidy data rules, um, where uh, you're, you're, being, you're, you're being careful about having things in, in a table format and um you, you commonly see things like um you might have a table of data and then interspersed in the middle of it you might have something like a, a summary for parts of the table and you want to avoid something like that um, because it just makes it a little bit more difficult to work with and you have to clean that up before you really want to do certain things um but here on the screen you can see um this there's some data where uh each row in this data uh, each well, each column uh, in in the in in your your table um, should have only one variable, um, and often we 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 you can you can kind of overload these things. So a common example might be like first and last name. Um, it's often a good practice to have those things if you have a table of customer data um, separated out into uh, separate columns, because um, then if you do want to work with them or do something with them, then you can from that point you can go forward but if they're they're smushed together in some type of format uh maybe they're it's first name last name if that's in a column um you 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 and you want it to be last name comma first name um you have to do a little bit more uh work of transforming that data um and at the same time if you have maybe like two numerical values you're you're, you're recording two things or maybe like uh sales and and profit for a certain region or a certain store you don't want those in the same exact cell you want it, those to be separated into their own specific columns um and at the same time you want to have a clear idea of what each row in your table is and here that's that's called an observation uh where that observation you know sticking with like customer data examples would be maybe like a customer and each variable or each column uh might be um you know it could be sales numbers uh for for that customer in a period of time or it could be you know any any feature for that customer but each customer would only have um the one the one line or um you have to be very careful about um so for example in this in this case each each observation is actually just a country and a year combination um so each row in the table represents that one thing so there wouldn't be two rows for example with um with with a country and 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 a year repeated because uh, they should be uniquely identified in that in that table by those two columns and that that represents the observation um and then finally uh each value should have its own cell um you can get to some wacky things where especially in excel you're trying to format things so it's presentable where you might have um <coughs> merged uh merged cells or um you might have uh, yeah multiple pieces of data in the same in the same cell um so you want to avoid that um and then from there like obviously the, the first thing you're going to do with, when you have your data is you're going to you're probably going to do what we call you know building a report or a dashboard or you're running a report out of um some software system that you have or that that system might have dashboards um that it, that it presents to you already um and really that's just a summary and view of your data um, that you can use for, you know, operational purposes, just to kind of like get familiar with it, look at it, um, think about what, what your KPIs are, your key performance indicators, and, um, you know, bring your attention to those things and pay attention to them, um, and, 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 you know, play around with maybe filtering on those things, drilling down to them. Um, that's, that's kind of the, 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 the simplest, you know, first step. Um, one of the keys here in my, or one of the warnings that I have at the end here is to just don't miss the forest for the trees. Um, 
you can be so hyper focused on certain things um, where you you do want to have at least a, a broad perspective and um, and not 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 kind of overemphasize one one key performance indicator versus another. Um, and just an example of that um, this is a dashboard that was built with um, Microsoft Power BI. It's one of the examples from their website, but you can do something similar similar to this with Excel very easily. You get some data and you um, can create some summaries and create some charts and if you just you know be paying attention to it, maybe spotting some uh, trends as you as you uh, see them as they come up um, and just being aware um, and keyed into your data. Um, so at the end here, I'm just going to do a uh, quick demo where I'll, I'll, I'll open up um, an Excel and kind of show you how data should be uh, in this, this tidy format, um, how you can organize things into like an established table in Excel. I do things like filtering and sorting to, to quickly view certain parts of some data that you want and then how, how you can summarize them with um, a pivot table and make some charts. I don't know if my mouse works. Let me switch this. So here um, we just have some example data, and um, it's you know some some demo test sales data uh, where we say we look we have um, different sales orders um, from different regions of different product lines, um, with sales amount and. Um, you can obviously tell that this is in that tidy structure where each um, each one of these lines is a, a sales order um, in, a, in a, and it has um, you know these values clearly separated. So I don't have you know a column that has region and product line and they're they're separated out into um, their own columns uh, and Excel has a useful ability to, to, to tell, um, tell, tell it that uh, this, this data is part of a table. If you just click this table button right here, it sees it recognizes this range and it will put it into a table that can be uh, used for other purposes. And you can, you can do things like name this table and then refer to it in certain, certain other areas. Um, but let's say, oh, I, let's say I wanted to first format this because uh, this shouldn't be in just a number like this. I guess I can do this. and. Uh, yeah, format it like that. So it looks more like some sales. Um, but then let's go and insert a pivot table. Um, and I'll just put this right here. And pivot tables are a great tool uh, in Excel for just summarizing data and um, playing around with its structure. Um, so for example, here, I just wanna look at, maybe I wanna summarize all my ordered sales uh, by region. So I can quick do a pivot table and do that. And uh, once again, we have to reformat this to make it a little bit more readable. There we go. Uh, so we can see the total my total sales. And you can see that, like you know, the Midwest is definitely my bigger sales region. Um, maybe you know, maybe we start out in the Midwest and we're we're trying to grow into the East and West, and we're we're seeing maybe better growth in the in the West. Um, but we could also then say like, oh, how are our product lines uh, doing uh, in these different regions? And we here we see like, oh, like obviously our biggest uh, product line that we have the most sales for is this this product line B. Um, and we can see, you know, maybe we're looking at how how big this is relative to the other product lines. Like, there's not a lot of traction on these other product lines in the east, uh, but maybe we we have more sales on C here. And so maybe that's getting some traction in the Midwest and we have some more on C also in the West. So, you know, maybe we promote this more or maybe even discontinue this in this region, you know, you're just asking these kind of questions. Um, and then, uh, so pivot tables are a great way for summarizing data like this. And you, you kind of specify rows and you specify what you want to uh, have for values and you can add multiple things in here. You can do different things like instead of summing these, I can actually maybe just count them to get an idea of um, how many how many orders I have in 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 each one of those regions, um, which might be relevant in some some instances. But um, let's go ahead and also uh, let's do let's do some charts. So 
simple thing to do here, just hit this recommended charts and you kind of have to play around with it and you'll get more familiar as time goes on. But um, this is, this is, you know, a good one. It's interesting. Maybe I want to look at this and see trends. I have big sale days and maybe I need to uh, adjust, uh, you know, staff or something, uh, you know, around, around those days and uh, make some decisions related to that. Uh, alternatively, uh, let's, let's, let's try another one. I can see, oh, uh, Let's see if we can get here we go region so here's just a simple simple way to visually see what we were kind of just looking at in that pivot table with our regions um but maybe we also want to get this to adjust this this chart here and now we see we see the same sort of patterns and we can look at the differences and magnitudes in those different regions um yeah so just some simple things you can do in excel um to play around it's really excel is the that that, that first tool that that you'll probably use it's it's ubiquitous uh there's google sheets as well which has has a lot of the same um functionality but excel is you know the the mainstay uh and from here there's 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 a lot more that you can do as you as you um build up your data infrastructure and and, and go forward um different ways you can organize your data to be more efficient um, but you know this this could be the start of a dashboard where you're where you're trying to um, you update this this data in this table and you can refresh all these these charts and these summaries and um, you know just keep an eye on things and and um, you know explore questions that are interesting for you and your business. Um, so uh, that's that's all I have. Um, but really. Um, just, just my, my recommendation is it's a, it's, a, it's, there's a lot you can do with your data and, um, you, you can go out there and, um, you should, you should find, um, what, what data you do have and think about what data you could be getting. Um, you could do some very interesting things with it and just, just, you know, um, explore a little bit, build up your familiarity, um, uh, ask questions. That's always, that's always good. It's a tool to, keep you engaged with your business and, and make, um, you know, better, more informed decisions. Um, you shouldn't get lost in it. Um, but, but, um, it can, it can definitely help you see certain things that you haven't seen and it can help you, um, you know, learn more about every, every aspect of your business really. Um, yeah. Are there any questions? No, okay. uh, then I'll uh, say so it's good. Um, one last note. Uh, here's some contact info. Um, you can go check out our website. You can tune into our uh, 3 p.m. Uh, webinars that are that are uh, listed on our website. Um, we have multiple a week and in various different languages um, on, on topics uh, that, are, that are relevant for your business. Um, if you have any questions or are interested in our services, um, you can reach out to us. Um, Catherine uh, is our marketing manager and she's, uh, her email's there on the screen, Catherine at communitycpa.com. And uh, you can give us a call at 515-288-3188 or uh, stop by uh, this is our Des Moines office from Monday to Saturday um, between 8.30 and 5.30 and we'll, be glad to talk with you and um, work with you on um, different things that you're uh, interested in our services for. Um, we have uh, accounting, tax preparation, business consulting. Um, so yeah, we, we'd love to see you and love to hear uh, from you. And I hope that this was a informative uh, webinar and uh, can, can encourage you to go explore your data. Thank you.